Okay, so we have drawn our fruit bowl, and now we're going to apply color to it. The first color that you are going to use is the actual color of the fruit. And we're going to start with a grape. Now, to get the illusion of 3D-ness, to make it look rounded and not flat, we're going to use a highlight, the color of the, of the fruit, of the grape, a highlight, which is the white light when the light hits the object, and a shadow, which is on the opposite side of light. So we're going to pretend like our light's coming from here, and it hits this grape here. So that's going to be the little white highlight area. I'm just going to draw a little circle there so I know not to color that in. And then I'm going to apply the actual color of the fruit. Okay, now once I get the grapes color, now I'm going to add a shadow. And again, my light's coming from here, hitting that round grape and creating a, a shadow here on the opposite side of the light. And I'm going to use this blue to create a shadow. A lot of times when we think about our shadows, we think about maybe a black, but a a lot of artists use blue to create shadows on their forms. And we are creating forms. The difference between a form and a shape is that a shape is flat and a form has mass and volume and it looks 3D. And we can create the illusion of 3D or depth on a page by using lights and darks. So there's your first grape, and there's so that's what I will what you need to do is color of your grape, shadow, and highlight. And each one of those will be done just like that. Then let's move on to the <coughs> apple. Same thing. We're going to use the color of the actual object first, making sure we just go ahead and make a little light area right here where we're not going to color anything in so we don't forget. And then we're going to color in the color of the actual object, which in this case is red. Apples can be a lot of different colors. I've, there's green apples, I said Granny Smith, I think is what they're called. And then there's uh, probably other different types of green apples. I don't know the names of all of them. Then there's yellow apples. And there are red apples. One of the red kind of apple is called Red Delicious. I, I like buying those. I buy those Red Delicious apples. And then there's lots of other different types of red apples. Their names escape me at this moment. I don't remember. I must have something underneath my paper. It's making it... Give it gave it that little weird place right there. That's okay. You know, apples aren't perfect. You see how I've made a lot of little liney areas to get rid of those lines. Turn your paper the opposite direction and color in the opposite direction and it kind of cancels out all those lines and gives you a smoother look. I'm not pushing down really hard. I'm just coloring naturally just okay now I'm going to use um, a darker red this is the red I started with it's red and then this one right here is called red violet I'm going to use that to start my the dark area over here my shadow I'm going to use this darker red and then I'll put some blue on top of that 
to give it even more depth or the illusion of 3D-ness. The more contrast you have between your dark and your light area, the more it's going to make your object appear to pop out of the paper. So you you want a nice contrast between your very your dark on your object and your highlight. If you start to create a line here between this color here and this shadow, you really don't want a line. You want it to gradually move from dark to light. So you can take your crayon and just move it over where it looks like those two areas created a line and it will it will blend those two areas together and together and make it help to make that object more round. Okay, and down in here where the um, stem goes inside there, we're going to make that a little dark too because anything that goes in or back, you have to make it darker. So this is going back. This side of this apple, if it was a real apple, would be going back. So this side gets a little bit of a dark area too. Not as much as this one. This is your darkest. But this is going to have a little bit of a dark area to make that apple look like it's going back into space. Okay, so I'm going to take my blue and add a little bit of blue over here. Not all over this area but just along the edge here, I'm going to create a crescent shape. What's a crescent shape? A crescent shape is like, like the moon you see sometimes. This is a crescent shape, and that's the, really the shape you should create when you're making a shadow on, an, on a sphere. By the way, these are called spheres, this kind of form. There are other forms. You've got cubes, and you've got cylinders and cones. Those, um, all these things are shaded a little differently. So, <clears throat> your darkest dark is going to be right there next to those grapes we've drawn. Okay, you see how that's starting to pull that apple back into space, make it look like a real apple, like you could pick it up. They'll go like this around like a balloon. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of blue on there. All right, let's do the same thing with the orange. We're going to start with orange. Make your highlighted area. This is the color of the object itself. We're going to start with that. Now, to get to uh, another way that you can avoid making lines on your object is to color in a circular motion, especially on your spheres, your rounded forms, because that will help to maintain the roundness of the object. Alright, so once you get your color of the object, now we're going to, again, this is where the light comes in. This is the furthest, the area furthest away from the light, so that's going to be your darkest area. I used an orange. Now I'm going to use a little darker orange, and this is called Scarlet. And I'm going to use this over here on this edge. Just right along the edge here. And since the apple's in the way, this is all we can do really for the darkest area here. I'm going to make um, that little, that little navel or whatever 
you call that little thing on the orange. I'm going to color that in a dark orange. And then it has these um, little grooves here that we can create using cur little curved lines that come out of there. Now I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to go over that orangey area there where that navel is, just kind of giving it a more realistic color. Okay, now I'm going to take my blue again, and over here, very lightly, Don't we don't want to color hard, we don't want some, we're not coloring, we are shading. So very lightly, as a matter of fact, I'm holding that blue on its side and very lightly shading in a very dark area along that side of our orange. And look how that's pulling that orange back into space. And because this would also, here comes my light down here, I would also have a shadow because part of that orange is blocking the light. So I'm going to put a little bit of this blue air, just a little. What, what, what I'm doing is very lightly adding some dark there. I call it scumbling. I'm scumbling a little bit of shadow there, a little blue there. I'm going to go back over it with an orange so it doesn't look so blue. There. Look how that's pulling that. Remember, we want a nice contrast between our, hot, our lightest and our darkest areas. That helps to pull those objects back into space. All right, so in this pair, let's go to the pair. It's a little different, but you, we and when we drew this, we said this is like having two different spheres, one on top of the other. And so we're going to... We're going to... Um, treat each area of this pair as if it was a, a, a sphere. So I'm going to start out again. Let's put in our highlight. Decide what color you want your pair. And go ahead and color in your pair. That's the color of the pair. All right. So let's take the top sphere. You wouldn't see the highlight down here because you got the apple and the leaf covering it up. So, But if you did get to see that part of the pear, you would actually see that highlight down there too where the light hit it. Okay, so now I've got the color of the pear. I'm going to find a, a darker green than this, and we're going to make, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to treat each one of these like a separate sphere. So up here, I'm going to create that crescent shape. This is my shadow over here on this side of my pair. This is my shadow, very lightly. And because this part of the pair is going in, it would bump, bump, bump. This is going to be a little dark right here, right? Because remember, we said anytime something you want it, something to appear that it's going back, you have to make that a little darker. So this little area right in here is going to be a little darker. And then up here along the edge of this pair here, we'll go ahead and make a little line there to help bring that back in, that side of the pair, go back into space. Now I've created a line here between my shadow and this color of the pair. So I'm going to take this crayon and I'm going to just lightly scumble in over this dark line and light area, the dark area and the light area hoping to blend those two together so it creates a very gradual movement from dark to light. You can even take your crown and do that little roundy thing I do. 
right over that, trying to erase, using this to erase that line between the dark and the light. That's pretty good. I'm going to um, take my blue too, and I'm going to just add a little tiny bit of blue on this side to help bring that around. Bring that side around into my paper. I'm going to put a little, just a little blue here. And I think maybe a little on these little edges here. Okay, so we've got that part of our pair. And now we're going to have to do the bottom, and we're going to treat it like it was, again, like it's another sphere. I'm going to put in a little of this green. I'm going to go ahead and do that round circular motion. And then over here, you can see a little bit of that. I'm going to just put that in here like this. Now, this is a very simple, easy, the simplest way that I can show how to uh, create the illusion of 3D to create spheres on a flat piece of paper to create the illusion of form. Um, this is the easiest shadow. Now, shading and values can be value meaning lights and darks of an object. It, it can get more complicated than this, but if you have this basic skill here, you can create the illusion of 3D on a flat surface. And that's what I'm trying to teach you here. A very simple way to do this. Okay, so we know how to do the graves. Y'all continue make doing those. We've done the apple and the orange. Now the banana is a little different from all of this. The banana, a banana is not completely round. Next time you, if you see a banana, look at it and you can see that the banana actually has edges or sides or what we call in geometry planes. Okay, and so it actually goes, uh, it actually, has a sharp edge to it and it and it goes it doesn't it's not round completely round so we're going to create two edges and one of these edges if the light comes down will get more of the light than the other edge and that also helps us to create the illusion of 3D so I'm going to do my first edge where the banana would get its lightest would be right here and so I'm gonna go ahead actually I'm gonna color my banana the color that of of the object first right and uh, this would be a little darker up here because the light can't get to it as well here because it curves up so this would be my lightest area down in here I don't actually have a around lighted area. This would be a little darker and as it goes down it would catch more light so dark to light. And then over here we have um, the same the color of the banana first. Now I picked out this color right here. I, I'm going to use this brown because I don't have a darker. Yes I do. This is dandelion. I'm going to try dandelion. I'm going to put a little dandelion on the side here. That actually doesn't really look darker. I'm just pushing down really hard. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to use my, I'm going to use my brown. But I don't want my banana to look brown, right? I want it to look like it has a shadow. So I'm barely touching. I'm barely touching that. That's just creating my shadow. Okay, so let's look at that up close. Okay, so that's pretty much what we can do for the banana. Now then the banana up here, it's got this. I'm gonna just make use brown. It's got that little almost like a little square up there at the top. Okay, that's the banana. The rest of it is um here's a leaf. And remember leaves can be different colors up uh they don't all have to be green or the the same green. I'm gonna mix a little yellow and a little you can even put a little yellow in there and you can add a little blue. This is just another look because what? Yellow and blue make green. That's just another way of creating 
things to look a little different on your page, on your paper, just coloring everything one color. This adds variety. and it, it is pleasing to the eye. All right, now see these little stems here? Some people just want to color these stems black. But actually, if you will look at a stem next time, it's more, it's clo more closely to a, a gray. Okay. Um, and then also these stems have roundness, right? They're like a little, if this was a stem, a little skinny like this, it has roundness. So you can actually go in and put a little dark side to your tiny little stem. See, that's the side that wouldn't get as much light, right? So you can even create the illusion of roundness there. I'm going to put a little bit of dark here inside that part of the apple make that look like it's going inside. Another stem, I'm going to put a little blue edge to it, make the top, and then all of this is just your little details. Put these stems here, making those gray too, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a little tiny line along the bottom. See now that, if the light Think about your light when you're when you're doing this. You got to think about how is the light touching these objects. Now the basket part, really quick. If you want to do the basket, it's a series of lines, curved, of course. You've got to maintain the integrity of the roundness of the object, so you've got to do the curves, right? And over here, these are just curves like this, but you want to alternate. You want to alternate them. What I, what I mean by that? I mean the line goes in between that. And actually, you're going to make these thicker, and I actually want to put them up this way. I want to do them that way. They're going to go, the lines are going to go like this, up instead of down. Curves go up instead of down. And they're going to be thicker these lines here. Thick, see how I'm alternating? I'm not doing it right here. Doing them in between those. These lines here can be thicker. And then just color these areas inside these areas here. This is going to be darker along the edge here and here. Okay, and then you just color the basket in on these little areas in here. So you're going to finish up your grapes and put in all your leaves and your details and you will be through and I will have this on canvas so you can go in and View it if you would like some help with your shading. Okay, see you later.